Hi there! In this video I will show you how to program a robot in EV3 Classroom. Now EV3 Classroom is a programming app for Mindstorms EV3, which means that today's robot was also assembled from Mindstorms EV3 bricks. Let's see it. Here it is. This is Forklift, everyone. Forklift was designed by Robocamp. Mm -hmm. And this is the robot that I'm going to program today. Now, I will create a program like this one, you see, by using step-by-step -step instructions where every step is explained and logical. Those instructions were created by Robocamp. If you would like to gain access to them or see what we do, head to this, the description below. All the links are down there. Also, if you enjoy this video and you would like to see more content like this one, let us know by leaving us a thumbs up. Now, if you are ready, let's begin. Today I'll be using an Android tablet, the same you can see in the corner of your screen. This means that you'll be able to see everything I do here. Now, EV3 Classroom can be used on tablets, on iPads, on computers, on PCs, laptops. This is a very versatile app. Now let's see the robot. Now, before, uh, before programming any robot, you have to take a closer look how it's built, okay, it's electronics, and usually we have the check stage of lesson for that, but to make things very quick, here in the back we have two motors, two large motors. Right here you can see a medium motor, which is responsible for lifting and lowering the forks, and in the front, you can see the distance sensor. Okay, note its position. Okay, it's, it's right in the middle of the forks. So basically, those two large motors can be used for um, moving around, turning, going back, forward. The medium motor, forks, and the sensor in the front for hmm. Now, a robot like this, you can program in many different ways. Uh, one is remote control, the other is, for example, creating a program that will allow a robot uh, to complete autonomously a certain task. And this is what we're going to do with the forklift today, okay? Let me show you an animation which shows the movement that we want to program. First, the forklift will approach the pallet. Once it is under the fork, it will raise it to a proper height, move it to another location, lower it, and then move back. Seems like a very simple operation, but it is a bit more complex when you're programming a robot. So without further ado, let's do it. Now, whenever you're creating a program, you need a way to activate it, to make sure that the script is actually running. And in this app, in EV3 Classroom, we will use when program starts block. It's one of the blocks available in the events category. So let's find it and add it to the programming area. Mm -hmm. You can add blocks to the programming area by simply dragging them from the palette and just dropping them right here. Okay, now do you remember what's the first thing that the forklift has to do in this movement? Now, first it needs to move straight until it detects a pallet, this additional element that we have created while building this construction. Now, this means that we need to activate the motors. And for movement in this construction, we have two motors responsible, two large motors, which means that we need to specify first the ports they are connected to and then the movement, how they should move. So, when you want to control two motors at once, you need to go to the movement category, okay? This is where our, this is where you can find all the blocks that control two motors at once, okay? So first let's find set movement motors two. Okay, 
in my construction those are also B and C ports so I don't need to change anything here however if in your construction those two large motors were connected to for example C and D ports of course you would need to change it the next block will allow us to define the direction and speed of this robot's movement so let's add start moving block Mm -hmm. And it's best to find the one with both uh, with both properties. Here you have uh, the movement direction, okay? And straight is exactly how we want this move this robot to move at the beginning. However, it should not move as fast as at fifty percent of maximum speed. That's too much. So let's lower it to just twenty percent. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were to leave the program as is, uh, the forklift would just keep on going forward without stopping, but there is a task we need to complete. So at some point it should stop, right? It should stop when this pallet is right in front of it, right on the forks, more or less here. Okay, but how can we possibly detect it? Well, fortunately, our forklift has a sensor right here. This is the distance sensor, and we can use it to detect the correct moment to execute the other, the next action in the program. Okay, so now we need to actually create um, sort of a condition, okay? We need to pause the entire program until the distance right in front of the sensor is small, short enough, okay? And with that can help us the wait until distance is blocked from the sensors category, okay? The sensors category, as you can guess, includes all the blocks uh, related to sensors that you can use in the EV3 classroom. So let's find this one. Mm-hmm, okay, and add it to the script. Okay, now here, by the way, you need to check uh, the port once again uh, that your sensor is connected to. In my case, it is number four, so I don't need to change it. Uh, and a less than 15 centimeter is certainly too much. Let's, uh, let's make it exactly as it is shown in the program, less than three centimeters, okay? Now this should ensure that the pallet is already on the forks and can be lifted. But before that happens, there's one more thing we need to include in this program. And that is, of course, to stop the movement of these two large motors. Otherwise, the <laughs> forklift would just keep on going. Okay, so let's add stop moving block. It's in the movement category. Mm -hmm. And this way we will stop both motors at once. When an event we've been waiting for actually happens, it's often a good idea to announce it, especially when operating a forklift, because this allows us to avoid any dangerous situations. So when the forklift approaches this pallet and it is on the forks, let's add a sound message to make it known and quite obvious, okay? So to do this, we need to find blocks responsible for playing sounds. And in this situation, an appropriate sound would be something like um, object detected, palette detected. Well, there is no sound for palette, but there is one for object. So we will use two sound blocks to create this message, object detected. Mm -hmm. Now that we've seen it, how to do it on the instructions, let's repeat it on the, in, the, uh, in the EV3 classroom as well, okay? So what I need to do is go to the sound category. Add two blocks play sound until done. This is very important. 
because if we were just to play sound, uh, the next command will be executed really fast and this would be just um, hard to understand, okay? Now let's find all the information we need, okay? All right, oh, sorry, not right. Object. Detected. Mm -hmm. And once we let it know, well, let it, once we let it be known, and uh, now it's time to resume executing the task. So now it's time to lift those forks with the palette up. Now, for this task, we'll be using only one motor, one medium motor, which is why we need to change the blocks category from movement to motors, okay? And here we can uh, decide for how long this motor should operate. Now, it certainly should not be running too long, otherwise we risk damaging the construction. So, to make it um, a bit more um, precise, we'll switch it to degrees. Okay, now let's add this block. Mm -hmm. And find a run for. Okay, once again, I do not need to change the port, but if you do, make sure you do. Okay, instead of rotations, let's select degrees. Now we need to type 1200. 75% mm -hmm. of speed is way too much because, well, notice how this robot is created, okay? It is actually very, very easy for the palette to just slide off and we don't want that, okay? This is, by the way, another hazard that's also, that could also happen when uh, operating a real forklift and you certainly don't want that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we need to decrease the speed to 35%. Okay. So now forks are up in the air and you remember what should happen now? Now is the time for the forklift to move this pallet to another location. This means that we're back to the movement category where we need to find a block that will allow us to define the direction it's going to, uh, for how long and at what speed. Mm -hmm. And notice something interesting here, okay? First we need to specify in which direction it will turn but also notice uh, what we're doing with speed here, okay? We're setting it to minus 20%. Now, this does not mean that the power will somehow drop below zero. When programming Mindstorms EV3, when you are typing a minus sign in front of a speed, in front of a power, this means that the motor will rotate in the other direction, okay? And that's all it is. It will still rotate with 20% of the speed, but in the other direction. So let's find this block and add it to our program. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So first of all, it should not move straight because while well, we actually wanted to turn to place this palette in another way. So instead of straight, okay, okay, there's one minus of working with a tablet. Okay, but I can guess that it's a minus 100. One rotation is a bit too much. We actually need it to turn just a little bit, even less than a half of a rotation. So let's make it 0 0.4. Mm -hmm. And here I will repeat what we've just seen in the instructions. Instead of 50, I will make it minus 20% of speed. 
Now that the forklift is already in another place with the pallet, there are only two things left to do. First one is to lower the fork so that pallet can stay on the ground and then the robot should retreat, move backwards. Which means that first we need to use a medium motor and then two large ones. So, instead of taking them from the menu, there is a simpler way to do this. We can just duplicate the blocks that we already have in the script and modify them later. Mm -hmm. And you can see that we won't even need to modify much because when it comes to medium motor, the movement uh, as far as the ports and the length of the movement, well, should stay the same. The only thing we need to change here is the direction of motor rotation. Should it turn, when it turns one way, the forks lower, when it turns the other way, the forks are moved up. So, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, now you can also duplicate uh, code blocks when you're working with a tablet. It's a bit trickier, but it also works, okay? You just need to uh, press uh, a bit longer, okay? And once you click duplicate, uh, here's, here are those two blocks. Of course, we need to modify them. Let's start with the medium block. Instead of 35, let's change it to minus 35. Okay, and now of course we need to modify the second block responsible for the movement of the two motors. Mm -hmm. Now this time remember that the forklift is supposed to just retreat. The pallet is already on the ground in another place, so the movement should be once again straight, but in the other direction. So instead of left, Okay, once again, this is tricky. Okay, instead of left, let's make it, as far as I remember, it was zero. Exactly, okay, straight zero. You can see it once again here. Mm -hmm. For one full rotation, mm -hmm. at minus 20% of speed. So I don't need to change anything else. Now, if I were to take code blocks from the menu, it would take a bit longer than that. Now, the very last block we want to add in this program is the <laughs> program that will allow us to stop everything because, you know, the task is done, it's complete, there is no need for the forklift to keep on operating. So, let's add stop and exit program block at the end of the script. Okay. And this is the entire program. Now, this kind of program should allow the robot to execute the task that we have defined at the very beginning. But of course, we will never be sure unless we test the robot. So now let's proceed to the testing phase. Once you've completed creating the program, it's very important to test it in practice on your robot. Otherwise, you will never be sure if the program actually does what you want it to. Let's see if mine performs as expected. Now, before you test, it's of course important to connect your EV3 brick to the device. My EV3 brick is already connected, which you can see right above the script. So without further ado, let's activate the program. Okay, you can see that um, there is good news and bad news here. Now the good news is that the motor, uh, that the robot started going forward. The bad news is that, well, it acted as if it actually didn't detect the pallet in front of it, even though it was right here. So this tells me that I need to make a small adjustment in my program. 
Now mind you, this adjustment is connected to the sensor itself and sensors can be, well, tricky from kit to kit. So it may happen that you don't need to make this adjustment at all. However, I need to. So, well, the first thing I want to say is that maybe, maybe my sensor just needs a bit more time to detect this palette. So I will change three centimeters to four. However, if I change that, it means that the palette will not be here, but closer to the edge of the forks, which tells me that it's much more possible for it to fall off if the robot is turning too fast. So I will also decrease the speed at which the robot is turning. So instead of minus 20, I will change it to minus 10. Okay, now let's test this, um, hopefully an improved version of the program. Mm -hmm. First, I will upload it to the brick and now run it. Let's play this one more time. This time, let me show you how the robot works like on a close-up. So here you can see forklift uh, in much, much detail. Here's from the front, from the side, okay? And then now, let's test the program once again. Let me show you how it works. I won't place the palette too far. Uh, because actually we don't have too much space here, so I'll keep it uh, quite narrow. And now let's activate the program. <laughs> okay, maybe now from this side. As you can see, the robot performs as we expected, as we hope. So this certainly is good news and a success. If you've been programming with me, now is the time for you to test your robot and program in practice. And if you've been watching this video to find out more about programming in EV3 Classroom, well, I hope you've learned something and you had some fun while doing it. For more information on EV3 Classroom and EV3 Lab, uh, head to the RoboCamps blog. And for instructions, that is programming, building, introduction, that is whole lesson plans for robotics, also head to RoboCamp. Now, all the links are in the description to this video. And I hope you had fun. Thank you so much for watching this video and have an awesome day. Bye.